A lot of people become homeless. They lose their jobs, their companies. All the small companies are gone. The only thing you've got are companies that are somewhere underneath the Black BlackRock Vanguard groups, the two companies, which are the same company, BlackRock Vanguard, are the, essentially the same thing under the Pacheco family. They're just the right and left arm of the same people, and they own each other, and they own everything else of all the major corporations on earth. And then they are literally taking the, the people that are dying from this stuff and recycling them into the stuff they're reusing in the next generation as part of what's in there. If you look at the ingredients and know what those ingredients mean, you'll see it. It's also a lot in the processed foods, especially in fast foods. And people will go, you know, in that I had a document on my Blessed for Service website in which it was an interview and a person saying it's anti-Semitic. What's important, I, I'm not anti-Semitic and it may not be 100% absolutely, you know, what, but the information in there about going to a fast food restaurant, the FDA has tested that out and their food and their packaging plants for their big beef and all of that is not beef. It's 70 to 80% human DNA in there. So depending on which plant you're at, and that's true for all of these fast food chains, they're all that way. So you need to look at that. If you don't believe me, get your own sample and take it to a company and have them analyze it. There's been a lot of controversy in recent years regarding food service at McDonald's. However, the latest speculation about the meat this famous fast food chain uses exceeds all expectations. A report which contains a shocking audio confession by a man claiming McDonald's uses human meat as a filler in their 100% beef hamburgers along with proved facts that McDonald's has been accused of using worm meat fillers was published recently. This report impelled food inspectors to investigate the matter further and allegedly find human and horse meat in the freezers of an Oklahoma City McDonald's meat factory. So the food inspectors did find human meat and horse meat in the freezers of an Oklahoma City McDonald's meat factory. The inspectors also found human meat in several trucks on their way to deliver the burgers to the fast food restaurants. There are reports which suggest that upon inspecting McDonald's factories and food restaurants throughout the country, food authorities found human meat in 90% of the locations, while horse meat was found in 65% of the locations. In the words of the FBI agent Lloyd Harrison for Holzer, Quote, the worst part is that it's only human meat. It's, it's not only human meat, it's child meat. It's human children. The body parts were found across the U.S. factories and were deemed too small to be adult body parts. This is truly horrible, end quote. As far as cannibalism goes, it originated thousands of years ago. In fact, there are few tribes today that still practice it as a cultural cult. Sadly, cannibalism is also present in the modern world. In 2013, a North Korean man was sentenced to death for killing his children for food. In America, the people who supported eating human meat, Jeffrey Dahmer and Albert Fish, were proclaimed insane. Now it's expected of McDonald's fast food restaurants to give answers to the consumers. How long has this human meat been used? Where did those children come from? So, so, so you're saying like things like McDonald's and Burger King, Wendy's, yeah, Win yeah, anything that's a beef burger that's a big that's a big franchise and it's mainstream and it's been around for decades. We know that they're definitely in with this. Absolutely, like in England, I had way back two years ago a guy that told me, "You're absolutely correct, Gene. I work in a meat packing plant for a major company. I won't say the name or I'll lose my job." But I've been working there for almost 30 years. And 20 years ago, when the mad cow thing you know, came up, we had problems getting. And then suddenly the food changed the way it's the big you know, chunks of meat we get in changed. They are no longer hairy, you know, furry. They're hairy and not the hair like you'd see on a cow. And the smell is different. The color is different. The size is different. Everything about it was different. The bones are different. And I know the bones of a cow. And those are not the bones of a cow. I know what it's the bones of 
And so this is exactly, so if you're buying meat from a major shopping center or anything, I would say if you're not, uh, fortunately I have a person that I buy meat who raises own cattle, I can go see the cow. I can go see also bison. I can go see the bison. I can watch it go into the place and, you know, and then they pray over it. I can see all of that. If you don't have that option, get chicken with a bone in it, get fish where you know it's a fish. Yeah. Uh, those kind of things. If you're going to be eating meat and those kind of things, then make sure you're really eating what you think you're eating. And what does that do to you long term? It's not what we're being told. None of it's what we're being told. So we need to do the research and find out for ourselves. And if people do decide to do the research on a hamburger, I really think that you should get every proof you can, photos, videos, signatures from doctors. And I think it's really important we put all this together and it could, it could be a number of you and we could put this out there on my platform and show the people and we could even do an interview with you. I definitely support that. And I definitely, Gene, like to do research myself on a hamburger, actually. Thank you for doing that, Nicholas. I think that's important that every platform out there that people do this, get the information, get the lab results, the whole thing. If it is cow, let's know it's cow. If it isn't cow, let's know how much of it isn't cow or how much of it is cow and what else it is. You know, mm, absolutely. Know back, you know, 30, 40 years of most of the meat coming into the, to be from cows was what was called triple D where it was dead, diseased, or dying. The cow only went to the market when it started to lose weight and they cut huge tumors and all kinds of, and they just grind it up and they'd feed that to the cattle and that wound up giving them, because if an animal eats its own kind, it winds up getting its own kind of kuru. That curated now cow's disease. So then they instead give it to our pets now, our dogs and our cats. So mm -hmm. also on my uh, back channel, when I get Gene D cut up, we'll have, how to make your own natural dog food and cat food and different things and how to take care of your animals so you can get healthy animals too where your animals aren't having these kind of things that you know you have to buy that's very not very good for them it's all this recycled and you know terrible stuff <laughs>